Tamriel, Dawn's beauty in the language of the Altmer, or Tazukan in the dragon's tongue, is the continent upon which all the Elder Scrolls games take place. Home to many diverse races, and even more conflicts, Tamriel has been host to many adventures. You've experienced Tamriel in your own way, but want to learn more about its story? Well, to get to the heart of the story, you have to go back to the beginning. Behold, the northern province of Skyrim, cold and rugged. Climb any one of its icy peaks and you'll quickly realize why this old kingdom is considered the throat of the world. Skyrim's pine-covered peaks holds four out of the five highest mountains in all of Tamriel, making it a land kissed by sky. To the uninformed outsider, Skyrim only conjures up images of snow and mud, and while there is truth in this, its citizens know Skyrim as a land of breathtaking vistas, mighty rivers, and above all, a place of proving. It is a land where heroes are made, crafted in the harshness of the land's embrace. To know Skyrim is to know its people. A tall and sturdy race, well suited for the cold climates of the northernmost province, the Nords can tolerate the cold like no one else. If their fair skin and yellow hair does not give them away, then their thick muscles and large frame surely will. The Nordic people have been taming Skyrim's harsh interior for generations, and it shows. They are no strangers to hardship. Whether it be farming the land or defending it against the occasional saber cat, the Nords have been strengthened through their need for survival. And they've done more than just survive. Throughout history, the Nords have proven themselves to be some of the most skilled melee fighters in the realm. Violence is an accepted aspect of Nordic life. Their people face battle with a ferocity that shocks and even appalls their enemies. When he passes from this world, a Nord isn't remembered for how he lived, but for how he died. His tireless quest for honor and glory has made the Nords a force to be reckoned with. Make no mistake, this is a race of conquerors. On the battlefield, Nordic warriors are arguably the hardest fighters Tamriel has ever seen. When the ancient Nords attacked a city, they had no need for siege engines or cavalry. The elite among them speak in the dragon's tongue. Equipped with only their voice, they could force down the doors of an enemy keep. A strong Nord can instill bravery in his men with his battle cry or stop a charging warrior with his chilling roar. A Nord's voice is his strongest weapon, and he attributes this gift to the Aedra. Atop the throat of the world, in an age long forgotten, the sky goddess Kine breathed life into man. With her divine breath, the Nord found their strength. You may know Kine by her imperial name, Kinnereth. Most Nords acknowledge the Divines as their gods, but unlike the rest of the Empire, the Nords see the Divines as notably more warlike. Just ask the nearest Nord what he thinks about life and death, and you'll have a brief glance into their culture. A Nord will tell you there exists a place so magnificent, so honored, that the entrance lies hidden from view. Sovereign Guard, it is called built by the god Shore to honor those Nords who have proven their mettle in war. Nords who die with sword in hand are rewarded with a feast that never ends. Within this hall of valor, time as we know it has no meaning. The concepts of life and death are left on the doorstep, and those within exist free of pain and suffering. A Nordic afterlife free of pain and suffering is a pretty ironic thing, isn't it? considering pain and suffering is the price of admittance. The path to Sovereign Guard is littered with the bodies of the fallen. This unique belief system in where only the strong prosper in this life and the next 
is the very thing that has made the Nords a damned near unstoppable force throughout Tamriel's history. The history of the Nords is one of migration and retribution. Before they took the name Nords, this race of men called themselves Admorans, denizens of the continent known as Admora. Long ago, Admora had erupted in a great civil war that had left the continent drowning in its own blood. In the midst of this chaos, a visionary gathered all who would follow him and set sail to the south in an effort to build a new life for his people. After a perilous journey across the Sea of Ghosts, their ship touched ground in modern-day Skyrim, finding the land already occupied by Myr, who they called Snow Elves, the Admorans named the land Myrith, in honor of them. The Admorans and the Snow Elves lived in relative peace for many years, which today would be unheard of for any place where elves and men reside. This was until one fateful night, when the treacherous Snow Elves pillaged and slaughtered the Admorian people. That night, an entire city burned, its people murdered without mourning, without mercy. The Snow Elves, or Falmer as they called themselves, had come to a decision. Apparently the race of men were growing too quickly for their comfort. They did not wish to see men's culture surpass their own. Feeling threatened, the Snow Elves turned to genocide, a sin they would one day pay greatly for. According to legend, not every Admoran was killed that tragic night. Out of the ashes came one visionary and his two sons. They returned to Admora together and spread the news about what the honorless elves had done to them. Five hundred companions heard their stories and joined Yskamor in an event that would lead to the birth of the Nordic race. The Return Settlement by settlement, city by city, Yskamor and his five hundred companions drove the elven betrayers out of Skyrim. Driving the Snow Elves to near extinction, Yskamor cleared the way for his people to return to Tamriel. The Elves had learned a most painful lesson. The race of men were here to stay. At this time in the Nords' early history, dragons roamed the sky over Skyrim, and the Nords worshipped them. Their frail mortal voices were drowned out by the mighty thum of the dragon and so it was only natural that these children of Akatosh should rule over them. Dragon priests possessed incredible power, both in their magical abilities and in politics as religious leaders. They acted as intermediaries between the Nords and their serpent god kings, building great underground temples to appease their dragon masters. Over time, the dragon priests of Tamriel had become more tyrannical, and eventually Skyrim rebelled leading to the legendary Dragon War. Man fought the great dragons and died by the thousands. It was clear the Nords were fighting a battle they simply could not win. Yet, when all hope seemed to be lost, some dragons turned against their own kind and taught the Nords powerful magic that allowed them to turn the tide of war in their favor. After a long and bloody campaign, the rule of the dragons was ended, and those remaining fled to remote areas. The Nords, now free from both elves and beasts, claimed Skyrim by right of conquest. And so, the Jarls placed the jagged crown atop the head of their first king of Skyrim, Lord Harold, descendant of the now Nordic legend, Yskamor. Over a century later, the Nords of Skyrim were ready to be led to glory by King Harold's son, the ambitious Vrage the Gifted. King Vrage believed that the destiny of his people was not only to rule over Skyrim, but beyond. His aggressive and bloody expansion is now known as the Skyrim Conquests. Within the span of 50 years, the descendants of Yskamor ruled all of northern Tamriel, including most of present-day High Rock and the whole of Morrowind. Lands had been conquered before in Tamriel's history, but never like this. The elves quickly learned how great the Nords had grown in such a short time, but by then, it was too late. Land the elves had fought over for millennia now belonged to the upstart race of humans, who only centuries earlier, 
posed no real threat at all. Needless to say, the young headstrong Nord struck fear into the hearts of every elf on Tamriel. So, reluctantly, the elves had to set aside their differences and face the Nords just as they had, united. Just as the elves were banding together in Morrowind, the last of Yeskimor's line was breathing his last in Skyrim, leaving the Nords with a mighty empire, lacking an emperor. Sadly, the Jarls of Skyrim were unable to reach a decision quick enough to decide on which of them were worthy of leadership. And without an emperor, their empire soon fell to the elves. Now confined to Skyrim, the Nords mostly kept to themselves until late in the First Era, when Tamriel's neighbors in Akavir landed on the icy shores of Skyrim, swords at the ready. With incredible discipline and combat precision, the likes of which the Nords had never seen, the mighty Akaviri Dragon Guard cut through Skyrim with ease. Thoroughly impressed by the Akaviri invaders, the whole of Skyrim pledged themselves to one man, Remen Cyrodiil, the first dragonborn in recorded history. The second empire of man had dawned. Centuries came and went, and the Nords of Skyrim carried on loyally serving their Akaviri empire, upholding their kingdom and protecting their people. But even they could not stop the blade of a Morag Tog assassin. With their leaders assassinated, the second empire quickly crumbled. Now without an empire, the Nords were free to engage their neighbors in glorious battle once again. However, their expansion would be interrupted. When the Daedric Prince Molag Bal sought to make Tamriel burn in the second era, the Nords entered one of the most unlikely alliances Tamriel had ever seen. You see, a mortal's need for survival has a way of transcending race, and so it was the Nords banded together with the Argonians of Black Marsh and the Dark Elves of Morrowind. In an effort of self-preservation, the Nords formed the boisterous front line of the Ebonheart Pact, lending their skill as fierce warriors and expert weaponsmiths. Once the fires of Tamriel were put out, the Nords fell back into their old traditions and began their aggressive expansion once again. What they weren't counting on was Tiber Septim and his newly formed Imperial Legions who sought to usher in the Third Era with an empire of their own. After a few honorable confrontations with Tiber Septim's Imperials, the Nords knew an empire when they saw one. While most of Tamriel was dragged into the Empire, the Nords chose to join their fellow man willingly. After all, the human Imperials shared many of their qualities, having been cut from the same cloth. Many Nords soon donned the Imperial uniform, gladly serving under their new Emperor. Tiber Septim may have taken an Imperial name, but the Nords knew him by Talos, son of Edmora. Talos was Dragonborn, the likes of which the Nords had seen before. Dragons and those claiming the power of dragons seemed to be destined to rule. Dominance is in a dove's very nature, and while men hopelessly cling to their perpetually crumbling empires, Tamriel's extinct race was ready to take back their birthrights. But that is a story for another day.